Look at that rear end. Yesterday we lifted the rear end, put new shocks in there, and then today we are going to uh, fix up the front, lift it up a little bit. Pretty maids all in a row. Everybody's getting to work. Got a lot of vans in here. One, two, three, four, five. Enough for two more, I think. All right, guys. So uh, this is a uh, part of my North America van life industry tour. If, if, I, if you don't know already, and this is day two at Agile, and we're getting uh, shocks struts and a lift kit installed on the on the transit. I spent the night at the parking lot last night while they did the rear end and today they're going to do the front end. Apparently the front end is a bit more intensive so uh, we'll probably be here till noon. There's also a bolt issue. This bolt here, uh, one of the sway bar connects on the rear end had sheared this bolt off uh, where it connects to the frame. I didn't know about it. I think it's probably been there since I bought it. I think it's probably been there since the previous owner had the van. Just so happens that we found the problem, which was kind of nice because eventually it would need to have been fixed. And we're gonna fix it here in Agile. We'll have to find this bolt. We ordered one, it's supposed to be in tomorrow, but hopefully I can get it today. There's, a, there's actually a bolt company that just specializes in bolts. It's like Walmart for bolts and they have every bolt and they're only uh, three miles away. So we're gonna finish the front end. We're gonna bring the van down. If the bolt hasn't come by then, I'll go out and see if we can run out and find a replacement bolt. And then once that's done, the van will be finished and we will be on the road yet again. And the van will be a little bit higher. The tires will look a little bit smaller. I don't have new tires yet. Uh, BF Goodwrench is, is, is going to set me up with some KO2s and, and I have some rims from a company called Method that, that will be coming in February. But until then, it will look raised and beefy with the little original tires there but that's okay. So this, this tour is about sharing with you my journey as I build out the van. Just kind of reiterate, we've already been and installed the ladder and the rack and the front bumper, rear bumper, lights, pathfinder lights, as well as the worn wench in Arkansas at a company called Backwoods Adventure Mods. Then we went and got an uh, antenna up in the front. You can't see it. It's called a WeBoost antenna system. That, that will boost my signal by about 30% from the exterior to the interior of the van. Then we went across the street around the same area in Houston and picked up um, all the chemicals uh, of a variety called lizard skin. That's a two-part chemical, a sound deadener, as well as a thermal barrier. And so we picked up 20 gallons of that. We hit the road to Phoenix, where we met with Cruise and Comfort, got the air conditioning system, 48 volt HD mini split air conditioning system. It's not ready yet, they'll send it to me, but we did a tour of their facility. Then we came actually to here, picked up all my struts and stuff. Then we went up to uh, Van Windows Direct in Victorville and picked up all the windows because it's not gonna be this big white monster. We're gonna end up having windows wrapping all around it. But until then, I'm just, picked up the windows there in the back of the van right now. Then we came back here, we're gonna install this, the struts and the shocks. Then after this, we're gonna go up north, check out uh, ZAMP for the solar panels. Then Just Roaming Design is gonna help me with the Victron electrical system. And then uh, we will be headed up to Vancouver and across to Michigan and headed back home to Detroit. Dometic has also supplied me with a uh, awning and a refrigerator. So we have a whole bunch of stuff. We might even get the hood wrapped. We might do a whole bunch of stuff, so. But that's brought you up to speed. And that's half the video already. Dial. So you're gonna pull off basically almost identical ones, but the angle is gonna be different, right? So these are just adjusted for the new height. Mm -hmm. And then the Bill Stein. Struts. Okay. And then they have spacers on the go on top of your stock springs. Okay. These are what were the blocks on the back. Got it. Pretty maids all in a row. Look at, that, look at that work chair. That is the most comfortable shop chair I've ever seen. I look forward to coming to work just sitting in that chair. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is your strut, your spring, yeah. and then up top is gonna be the spacer. Up there? Yeah. Okay. That's the, your lift. But on this side, to get this out, you gotta disassemble all of this to get this out. Yeah. <laughs> that's the how, fun stuff. Yeah, that's, what Ford, that's how Ford made these. This one's easier than the, the 
The Pro Master, oh my gosh. Is the Pro Master the hardest of the three styles? The Pro Master, to get that arm out, we have to use the, it's like a 72 inch pry bar. It's like six feet tall, dude. It's wow. like, it's a beast and it's, the pry bar still bends. Wow. There's so much pressure on that arm. This is not as bad. You can do it with, the, you can do it with that one or the four. But you can't do the, the Pro Master with this one. You have to use the You gotta use the big dog. And, and two or three people hanging off of it trying to <laughs> hold the arm down. Just because of the sound of the impact or? Huh? Like the impact? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it rings through here. Okay. <laughs> I think it's gonna get a little noisy. I just gotta get the. Uh... Entire bowl all the way around. Under, around, back side, front side. Once you heat that whole bolt on the lower, you're pretty much. So I saw a roll of uh, this carbon fiber wrap. I'm gonna do this to the hood of my van, I think. I'm gonna put the carbon fiber on the hood. Also, you see a lot of Backwoods Adventure Mods. There's Backwoods Adventure Mods bumpers on everything and ladders and all sorts of stuff. So the actual lift that's gonna happen from the system is gonna happen right here. So that block there that's sitting underneath those U-bolts and, and the uh, leaf springs is the two inch. But for the front, it's actually gonna be this. And this is going to sit on top of the strut. You got the bigger bumper on here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because usually like, the stock bumper. Yeah, it just drops it out, down. Pull, pull it out. But you've got metal here now. This would have been such a pain in the ass if I would have done it at home, laying on my back <laughs> underneath this thing. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> So the, uh, the, the backwards bumper is impeding the removal of a part that's needed to access a bolt. So they're gonna cut a little, a little half moon out of the lower side of the bumper. No one's gonna see it, but it'll allow us to remove this strut that's kind of in the way of this bolt that we need to get to. Sort of reminds me of when I tore the dashboard apart a few days ago. In order to get the, the one part, you gotta remove another part, but before you remove that part, you gotta remove another part, and it's just sort of a, cascading effect. My dad was a mechanic, fixed buses in uh, Detroit's public transit system, among other things. He was a carpenter and a plumber and an electrician when we needed it. As a boy, he used to take me to the shop and let me drive the buses around. And uh, I grew to love the smell of diesel fuel and grease, a uh, very nostalgic smell for me. It's all about problem solving, you know? My dad would, would always teach me that, uh, always think about building the better mousetrap, you know? Whether it's uh, replacing a transmission or making a video or anything, you know, it's, it's a good philosophy. factory one doesn't have that. Okay. So it moves it out, it moves it down. Okay. Right there. So it can ha handle the more angle of the lift. Right. You have to go through all this to get this arm here. Because yours is uh, EcoBoost. Yeah. You have a box. Yep. It's right here. Yep. 
and then fuse box. And then you have another connector. I gotta unbolt the box, move the connector, then I can reach down back behind one to pull the dash down, and then the bolts are back there. Okay. Tio. <laughs> He's moving some things around in the dashboard. <laughs> this dashboard is gonna come on and off so many times. I'm sure I'm gonna have to do this again when I start to install the full-on electrical with uh, Victron. So there's three bolts that need to be taken out uh, from inside the cab on either side. And the ones on the passenger side, <laughs> can, you, can you see that thing way back there? It's, it's kind of visible. Let's see, there it is. Oh my gosh. If life was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. Then you just maneuvering the wrench onto it. This is the side, just a pain in the butt. That's why everybody, this is the side. First. So you're going to reuse the spring. The top part mm -hmm. is where that's going to. The top hat right. and the springs. Yeah. Will get used. And this bolts on. I'll show you. This will bolt on top of here. All right. These end up replacing what goes into the interior of the body. Yeah. This shop is full of music. There's a radio in here, and then there's a radio in this other area of the shop. So I'm guessing that this video is either going to be a lot of audio montages with music that I own, or it's going to get demonetized. Either way, I hope you enjoy it. Oh, that's what that is. I thought this had to do something with the tires. A spring compressor. A spring compressor. The new strut doesn't come with this. You take this off. This is the rubber seat. Yep. You're good to go. You're good to go. Are they left and right or both? Oh, the strut's are the same. They're the same. That's a uh, bump stop. If you hit something really hard, that's so you don't blow out the strut. Be the, the stop, so you yeah. don't blow out the strut. Yeah. All right, it's lunch break, and the guys are closing up the shop for a little while. So they gave me the keys to the to the pickup, uh, the runabout, and I'm gonna go to a, a Bolt uh -huh. specialty shop. <laughs> they, they specialize in bolts. And we're gonna see if we can match up this bolt. If, if I can find a, a, a match for this, this specific bolt, then we can be on our way today. If not, we gotta wait for tomorrow when they'll, uh, get the original bolt, but I, I think we can do without it. Let's go. Just left Ababa, Ababa, Ababa bolt. So this is the original bolt. This is the new one. It's a little bit different. So I hope uh, it'll work. I had to buy 17 of them. It cost me almost 20 bucks. Where are we at? Oh, I'm about to start hanging these uh, spindles. You trying, to, you trying to spread this a little bit so it goes on a little easier? Yeah, if you don't, you like fighting it and it's so heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, awkward yeah. weight. Try to make it easy as possible for myself yep. to get this thing back together. Yeah. lifted, the fronts is lifted, so we need to put the tires on, then we're good to go. We even fixed that bolt problem. I didn't even know I had. Gotta, gotta take care of the shocks, the old shocks. 
Got to be careful with these things. Don't want to damage them. Oh, the graveyard of dreams. Check this out. This is an Illuminous front bumper. Somebody just asked to take it off, replaced it with a Backwoods Adventure Mods. Oh boy. Last inspection, putting the tires on. They actually have to put a, a dollop of uh, dye on every bolt that they they articulate it, so they can kind of keep track of of what they've done. There's a lot of accountability here at uh, Agile. They're doing a lot of like road tests before and after to make sure that it's riding the same after as it did before, or the improvements that they had. He's doing the uh, the checks right now to make sure that the job they did earlier is, is the job they intend to do. If you did this at your home garage, you know, you don't have, you know, that many checks and balances. And there's experienced people that are checking other people's experience <laughs> repairs, which is nice. So what he's doing right now is he's lengthening the tie rods. Afterwards, we're going to put it down after we put the tires on, take it for a ride and see just exactly how how towed in or towed out the, the tires are. And don't worry, there's still enough meat inside there. Yeah. It's not gonna pull out. Okay, we're at um, 79. 79 and three quarter. They're extremely stood out yeah, yeah. when you first do it. If, you, if we would have checked it, it would have been like an inch and a half. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right, so we just took it for a test ride. One of probably a few. Yeah, one of a few. And uh, needs, a, needs a little tweaking, but uh, all's well. Check this out, guys. This is the the 2021 or 2022 transit so it's, it's it's younger than mine and mine was pretty darn young by the front grille has a different uh, different styling it's got a bunch of windows I'll have a bunch of windows pretty soon Let's check the tone. 79 and a quarter all right. Still, still time. all right so the alignment is basically perfect now so you drove it around a little bit even itself out so they're gonna tweak the tie rod ends slightly so that the steering wheel ends up being in the middle. Once that's done, we're all set. Wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. And we're going to test ride it and then I'll be done with Agile. Where are we going? Uh, to the front side. All right. Show off uh, one of our new builds. This is a Pleasure Way Recon Class B, kind of off-road oriented uh, RV. It's a four by four based RV. Of course, we did our rip kit suspension, which is our you know bread and that's butter. That's your that's your thing. This is uh, pretty much what the rip kit consists of up front. These sprinters so. There's a shock and a spring at every corner in, in most vehicles. Yeah. Uh, on the Sprinter, instead of a coil spring up front, there's a leaf spring, but it runs across the vehicle, a transverse leaf spring. It's composite. Works great on an empty van, but when you got a nice big heavy build out like this, it's just not able to support the weight and keep the vehicle suspended. You really lose about two inches of suspension travel. Okay. Um, so by adding the coil, it's not a very, very heavy sprung coil. Uh, more of a helper spring, but that's basically what's going to allow the vehicle to support the extra weight of the build. Uh, we upgrade the front strut from uh, the factory one to a Bilstein strut, and we added a secondary shock up here, so it's got the ultimate wow. uh, solution yeah. for damping up front. Uh, we've got our Fox 2.0 custom tuned rear shock, and then a set of custom leaf springs built for the weight of the van. So that's our 4,700 pound spring rate. Spring rate. These are Black Rhinos. Brand yeah. new uh, bead lock wheel for the Sprinter, which is that's a new thing that just came out a couple weeks ago. All wheels have a bead that the tire kind of hooks into and holds onto. Yep. Uh, on this side, instead of having something that it hooks onto, this ring right here sandwiches the, that lip of the oh, tire. Oh, this is a completely separate ring. Yes. Um, and so the purpose of that is when you go off road and you really, really air down a tire, uh, if you go, let's say, below 15 psi you've got a potential of this bead popping off on a regular wheel. So with the bead lock, now that it's sandwiched yeah, on there. It's, it's like a secondary. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna, it holds that clamped on there so you can run really low tire pressures off-road, makes it more comfortable, gives yeah. you more traction. Backwoods rear bumper, and then this is our RDO 
uh, storage plate so you can bolt max tracks, boxes, rotor packs, whatever you want. Yeah, John uh, showed me your uh, your claim to fame for these yes, the, printed uh, Yes, the door stops. <laughs> door so, stops. so now they uh, they index properly so this will if you put a big box on the back uh, uh, that won't slap in slap into the side yep, of your vehicle yep. or anything like that and because it's nice and indexes on the top corner the the load is balanced on the hinge. And these this is full of accessory opportunities. Yes, all of these Just, holes are threaded yeah. so you can pretty much mount whatever you want yeah. to it. Uh, we've got some people that have put like you know an luminous or backlit box on there. Like yeah. I said, you can put max tracks, put whatever you want yeah. on the back. And then so a new product, extremely extremely sturdy. Yeah. Uh, two pieces of aluminum with a cross brace behind it. It's not going to move around at all. Yeah. Rear tire carrier, fifth wheel of course. Yep. Um, and that, and then also on this side, we also added the Bravo snorkel, which is a product we got within the last couple of months. Wow. Uh, so nice snorkel intake to make sure you're still pulling in clean air into the engine. So just in case you get up to water about here, you'll yes, be all right. right yeah. Yes, right. you, can, you can get you can You'll get a right. neck deep in yeah, there now. Yeah, no other problem. You know. <laughs> the winch plate and uh, the light bar. So they're two separate parts. They bolt together. Uh, this is the Telluride winch bumper. Uh, we've done hidden winches for years, um, which looks like seamless, so you can barely see it in the front bumper. Um, the installation is not super difficult, but it's a little bit more of a pain. Um, with this new setup, the Telluride uh, winch bumper, very very clean and quick yeah, install yeah. on the front. You've got, you know, your built-in recovery points. We use Factor 55, you know, hardware with it. So these are, this is all you guys? You, yes. This is all yes, your so stuff really except for the winch that, itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, except for the winch and just these two little yeah. accessories on the front. All of that's ours. And then we've got this super sturdy, this is called the Ferrata light bar. Um, super sturdy light bar. You can stand on it, do whatever you want. Gives you a little bit more protection up front. But uh, it's so stiff and strong. The problem with some of the other light mounts on the market is, they're not reinforced, they're soft. You get driving on an off-road road, now your lights are bouncing around everywhere. This thing this is, is rock solid. very, very solid. Um, we also wrapped the hood nice for a nice aesthetic touch, nice carbon wrap up yeah. there. Yeah, I'd like to do that to mine too. Yeah, and if you want, you can show you kind of what the inside looks. Hopefully we don't have a ton of parts in there. Fridge here, shower and storage. You've got the fold down beds in the back that allow you to sleep long ways, which is really nice. So you're not cramped in there and you don't need window flares yep. either. Touch screen that controls all the interior lighting, controls the awning. And then there's another touchscreen inside so you can access yeah, access yeah. all that stuff from the inside. So and that is our Rebel right there. That's our shop van. So skid back. plate on the bottom, is yes, that yours? Yes. That's the agile skid plate. This one has a black one on this vehicle. This one we powder coated orange because that's our color. Yep. Um, so nice skid plates. And like I said, the Rebel's kind of the first and most popular one of this style of RV. So for the Rebel, the it is the most popular kind of class B sprinter overland platform. So we make a ton of custom parts for it solar panel kits, roof storage, um, a lot of really cool Rebel specific parts too that we're starting to adapt to uh, other other platforms nice. as well. Cool. The parts cool. of the mods are cool, but it's really about where how you're you going and how yeah. you're using it. Cool. They do a hydronic use? All right guys, she's cleaned up, she's lifted, and she's ready to go. That will end our time at Agile. Tomorrow we got to pick up uh, some of the windows, but I'm going to end the video now. We'll find out what happened tomorrow tomorrow. She's a little bit higher, a little bit tighter, a little bit more agile. Jayo.